Monday, November 21st. Not our typical hot spotting day. However, we have a very special hot spot for you. Uh, centered upon this guy's review, Tom McShay, uh, over the, what, last week, last Monday, Tuesday? This is not a podcast about a review. It's about a game. Okay, fine. It's about a game. That, yes. that is a good distinction. That is a very good distinction. Uh, Tom McShay reviewed Skyward Sword on, uh, what, Tuesday? That's when our review went up, and uh, it promptly, I, what are we going to say, lit the internet on fire. A certain... A certain segment of it. Uh, no, I mean people complain when when the oh, critics only use this this scale and they only give everything a nine, and then when you deviate from that, they complain. So right? It's, no, it's true. It's uh, a very good game. Very good game. Seven five. We're gonna go into some detail about it. Uh, before we get into it, though, I just want to make a quick note of the timeline here, just uh, you know, so people are aware of how this is going down. Uh, review went up on November fifteenth. This is being recorded on November seventeenth. The game comes out on November twentieth, and the podcast will be posted. On November 21st, um, just to put some of the comments or things that have been going on with the review in perspective, nobody has really played this game except for Thomas McShay and hey, oh crap, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Peter Brown. <laughs> Peter Brown is our newest addition to uh, the GameSpot crew. Peter, say hello. Hello. There we go. Uh, as you can tell, Peter lives in uh, the mission um, and he <laughs> does game guides. <laughs> For GameSpot, uh, he's been playing a lot of uh, Skyward Sword as well. Um, probably, I don't. I, I'd imagine you both have probably played about the, similar amounts uh, for different reasons, though. One to provide guides, and one to provide critical analysis. Uh, largely, I want to kind of stay out of this discussion because I don't know. I'm not really the. I'm not really the Zelda type. Um, it's not for me. It's a little too cutesy, but. Whatever. There are people out there who like it. So, um, and Thomas McShay is one of them, um, <laughs> I should say. So yes. when we get comments like uh, Wolflink001 uh, saying anyone who sides with Tom's review needs to get a lobotomy, I don't know. That seems, that seems, that seems fine. Fair. Lobotomy would be nice. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> right. Uh, but just to, just to kind of kick things off, start things off, one of the biggest problems with this game, uh, the, the pro probably the thing that kept it maybe from an eight, uh, is the controls. I would actually disagree. Tell me why you disagree. Tell me about one of the, the biggest problems with this game is the controls, but I think that the score probably would have been the same even if the controls were fine. Okay. Because the controls are a means to an end. They don't usually affect my score directly, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, but yeah, the controls don't... Uh, Peter put it really eloquently Is he in, in a post he made yesterday where he said they work 80% of the time like you'd expect, and the other 20%, they are messed up. And that is, that's a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, do you, want, do you want to talk about this at all? Yeah, I mean, you know, half the time you find the controls work exactly as Nintendo wanted them to. Uh, but then there are these moments where, you know, you're trying to hold the sword in a certain position and it, it's just not there. And it, this happens at critical moments, at points when, you know, you're relying on your weapon to work. Now, they could have included a classic controller option and they chose not to do that. Um, it's, it's disappointing. You know, it, the game overall is pretty good and the controls kind of mar and actually highlight the experiences that are bad. Yeah, yeah. when you're talking about the, uh, the you want the control in a certain place and it's not there, like specifically you have to fight an enemy and his, you know, he's blocking from the left so you hit from the right, like that scenario. And I'll be holding the controller on the left and it's like, oh, I have to switch to the right and it will swing. Or I'll switch to the right and it will, it, or it will swing up or it'll swing diagonally. And it's like, I, I, just, I just want to get over here and I want to swing to the side. Yeah, it seems like it's almost like limit, limited by the model mm -hmm. or the uh, the skeleton that's animated within the model. Something about the uh, the tolerances between rotations and angles, it um, it's just not accurate 100 percent of the time. Yeah, and that's I mean that's it's like it's ironic because I've been I was weaned on Nintendo games like you know it's my first real console because nobody cares about the Intellivision. So it's like I it's true. Ever since I was six years old when I got the NES, I. I I've been conditioned to think that the games are supposed to control perfectly. Like, it's just what I have in mind. And when I play a game that doesn't, I, I get very upset. So it's weird that, like, this Nintendo game, it's Zelda of all franchises, it has big problems with the with the sword action. Yeah. You know, and there is, I was showing Tom earlier, there's a part in the game where, or any part in the game, really, you can sort of play around with your sword and practice with the rotation and placement of the blade, and you'll get to points where you're you're realizing that it it just isn't working. It, it really just isn't and it, it, it kind of makes you realize that um you know the game would have been served much better if you could have used you know classic controls 
I mean, what if you were? How big of a difference would have the score have been if there was a classic controller option? I don't. I is honestly, that even a fair question? I honestly think this is a, this is a very good game. Yeah. Like, regardless of the controls, and the controls bothered me, they won't bother other people as much. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll bother some people more. But th what I gave a score to is the experience of playing, and that and that is you know the art design and the story, which are good, and then the the derivative fetch quest and the unnecessary padding, which is bad. And I think ultimately this game is just a very good game. So I, I don't think it would have changed the score. Yeah. It is worth noting, though, and you had to change your review because you had said that the orientation was based on infrared originally. Mm -hmm. And, okay, it turns out it's not. But that being said, in the beginning of the game or whenever you recalibrate the controller, it makes you point the icon in the center of the screen. Now, that essentially would be the same thing you would do if you used infrared. Yeah. And at that point, you are expecting that to be the center. When you center your, you know, when you're going into a Z-targeting mode, that's what you're expecting. And oftentimes it's not. Yes. Yeah, because you, like, the way it works mechanically is whenever you hold down B, it goes to aim mode. And wherever you're holding the controller at the time, wherever you're pointing, it thinks is the center of the screen. Yeah. So if you go through the whole game by, like, slowly pointing at the screen beforehand and then hitting B, you won't have an issue. But if you do anything slightly off, your aim will be off. And you have to recenter it. Exactly. And they give you the option to recenter it, obviously, but that it's almost, you know, it, it's making up for, for something. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, Nintendo clearly says every time you get an item that can use this, it's like, remember how to recenter yeah. it. Anytime oh, yeah. you go to the inventory, it says this. So Nintendo, like, acknowledged there was a problem. And instead of fixing it, they just gave you a way to, you know, get, get around it. it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is strange to me because this is Nintendo who makes perfect controls usually. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, we can move past controls. You want to move past Yeah, controls? I mean, I started the review with controls because yeah. it's important, but most right. of the game is not the controls. It's the other stuff. All right, so l l let's dig a bit deeper into the other stuff. Past the controls, what would you say this problem's, or this game's <laughs> biggest problem was? <laughs> Padding. Padding, yeah. It I mean, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about on uh, the normal hotspot this week. When I asked you how long this game was, you said like 50 to 70 hours. Yep. Um, it took me about 55 hours. About 55 hours. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a giant, giant game. Yes. That's, I mean, and it's okay if a, a game is 50, 55 hours mm -hmm. and it's a, each moment it's different. Uh, but when you're doing, as you said in your review, uh, fetch quest followed by dungeon by fetch quest and dungeon, you know, you just fall into that repetitive pattern. Um, did they mix up this, like, you have that overarching pattern, but the things that were different about each dungeon did that make it feel any different or was that did that break the pattern at all well i mean the biggest problem is okay so there's three main areas it's like grass desert and volcano yeah mm -hmm. and you visit those three areas three different times yeah um yeah. And, and sometimes you know when you're visiting one for the third time you'll start that quest and then within five minutes you need to go back to the other one to fetch something <laughs> it's and, and you had just left there and you're not going there to complete a mission. You're going there just to get something, get one item, and go all the way back. And that, of course, involves going back up into the sky, you know, flying your bird like over to that portal. It it just it takes about you know half hour to get one item. And if you had gotten it when you were there before, <laughs> <laughs> granted, it would be a shorter game and there'd be a little less content. But at least the content that was there, you know, uh, wouldn't have a negative impact on the experience. Yeah, it's it's it just gets into this repetitive predictability. Like they introduced the silent realm mm -hmm. where you have to collect fifteen tears. Um and then there's garden guardians chasing you and it's supposed to be tense, but it's it's kind of too easy to be tense. But it's like the first time you do it is kind of cool. Um the fourth time you do it, yeah. you just you just want it to end. I mean I, I could not believe that they did the same thing four times because it's not it's not that interesting. It's like a cool diversion once. Mm -hmm. But I that's kind of the theme of the game. I wouldn't agree. It's never never cool i mean <laughs> it, it's just not fun you know and yeah four times is one time is too many four times yeah. is way too many and then there's the the first boss um whose name i'm blanking on starts with the g uh girahim girahim you fight three times and each fight what, is what is the explanation for fighting these guys over and over and over uh well link is stronger than him <laughs> essentially yes yeah at the, at the at the given moment Link is able to subdue him, and, and he leaves, you know, with his tail between his legs, and he comes only back. to show up stronger. Yeah. So he's just kind of like the whipping boy or something? Or is it supposed to be like some kind of clever, cutesy thing that's going on right there? Or? It's kind of like, a, you know, you, you punch me in the eye, but I'm not, I'm not actually dead yet, so I'll come back and have revenge. Mm -hmm. But the fights are, like, all three fights with him are, are the same structure, where it's like you have to swing in a certain way. Yeah, it's, it's the same Sometimes, mechanic every time. It, it kind of becomes 
a little more complex, but only in, say, the number of projectiles he's going to send your way. Yeah. It's the same. You have to perform the same action, and the timing is the same. Hmm. It's, so it's it's the same fight used three times. There's another thing called the Imprison, which is a giant monster, and you fight it th three times. And it's like one of the big parts of Zelda that I like is like seeing a new monster and seeing how it will react and seeing, you know, the music. and the When you fight the same thing over and over, it loses its impact. It dulls its impact, and it just feels like padding. And, mm -hmm. and these fights with the Imprisoned, they're not like a typical boss battle. These are very slow, drawn out. Yeah. You know, you're fighting someone who's easily, you know, 20 times your size. Mm -hmm. And what that requires a lot of running and just kind of just, just to get to one end of him, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, is this a fundamental problem with the like could they have done it better or is this just the this is the way that zelda plays could they have are you asking if they could have structured it better yeah i mean is it a fundamental flaw with the zelda franchise at this see, point see i mean i brought it... up that was my beginning of my texture view is like these are the, the same problems we've had basically since ocarina recycled over and over again mm -hmm. and that they need to break out of it they just don't care enough to break out of it because people still like it and people still buy it but of course you could break out of it well i'm sure they still like it you yeah. Know? I yeah, think that, yeah that's a lot of it it's, it's a game for you know Miyamoto basically kind of yes I, I did a System Wars magazine interview I think that's what it's called where they were like how would you change Zelda and I was like what if you use like I, I don't even have to innovate here what if you use the original Zelda as a blueprint mm -hmm. and you have an open world you can walk around you can go to dungeons in different orders and you can solve puzzles in different ways and it's just it's more organic so my experience is different from Peter's experience mm -hmm. and it's like that's that's just like a simple fix it seems like but they have a very linear structured a to b like call of duty like thing oh, right now you where there's go, you want to go there <laughs> well it doesn't actually have much room to breathe and yeah. my and i mean if you look at our gameplay videos i'm sure they're nearly identical because there's not room to improvise there's not room yeah. to do anything so you're not like an adventure you're just following the pointing hand i mean that's kind of the problem with a with a franchise that's 25 years old it's so established that at this point that if they really made any kind of real change to it people would flip out but couldn't you say the same thing about a 16 year old franchise yeah no you because exactly majora's can. mask 16 years old i think about 2001 right that's some, yeah it sounds about right 2000 so it's like yeah. 16 years old uh mm -hmm. they changed the formula completely like mm -hmm. that was that's a divisive game because it is so different but they they just tore down what zelda was and they said there's a moon you have three days and it repeats itself over and over unless you finish mm -hmm. the game and pretty much zelda went from a 10 that was the game right after ocarina right yes so they went from a 10 to an 8-3 in game spot size or many yeah. critics gave it significantly well, lower I, than ocarina I, I mean i think since ocarina every game has been seven five or eight basically like they've just been in this rut where they can't because they can't replicate ocarina because that game is brilliant and i've already played it mm -hmm. so Especially when they try to do it again i've done it before and it's also at such a high level. It's like Uncharted 2 where you can't... Uncharted 3 is not as good because how do you reach that level of excellence? Right. And coming from A Link to the Past to Ocarina of Time w was such a leap in terms of just the overall experience. And we're just getting a lot of the same things now over and yeah. over ever since then. And, yeah. you know, a lot of what makes the series special to fans, obviously it's the characters, you know, Hyrule in some way, the Triforce. Um, how were the characters in this game? I like the bosses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, in, in your review, you say that uh, you really like Zelda, you really like Link, and yep. everybody else is like, why are you even well, here? Well, Girahim is, is, wow. He does not change at all. He is very evil when you see him, and he's very evil at the end of the game. And it's like, really? No no change at all? So he's kind of boring, and all the side characters except for Groose are one note. Groose actually does evolve and change. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're good. The writing and the story is good in this game. I, I wouldn't complain about that at all, except it's too much of it. Yeah, especially in the beginning when you just want to play. There's, yeah. there's yes. way too much dialogue. Yeah, but going back to Ocarina, so. um, sure. this game uses the same mechanics as Ocarina. Ocarina is a 13-year-old game. And it's and I like I pointed that out in my review because I'm a critic and I'm judging this game, you know, against every game that's out, not against Zelda games. So I'm like looking at this from from a modern perspective and I'm like, okay, automatic automatically jumping off of ledges is not a good idea. Having poor camera control is not a good idea because you, you need to be able to see the world. You need to be able to jump where and when you want. Mm -hmm. Um Nintendo is so stuck in the past, though, that they refuse to, like, overhaul what they did 13 years ago. And that's really frustrating to me because some things work and some things don't. And it's like, you know, add a jump button or take away jumping or give me camera control or something. But this is not it's yeah, they they constantly reinvent Mario. But Zelda has just been stuck in a rut for for decades. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of an interesting uh, point. Like, 
What is what is uh, Mar Mario doing right that Zelda's doing? Or what is Nintendo doing right with Mario that they're doing wrong with Zelda? Making it fun? They have no rules with Mario. They, I mean, yeah. they literally have no rules. I, I mean, Galaxy, they're like, what if it was just no uh, gravity to worry about in Small World? I mean, they completely changed what Sunshine was. Like, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. But Zelda, it's like, well, there's a certain formula. We have to do all the... And it's like, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could do what you want with it. So I don't know. I mean, I, the thing is, I'm a giant Zelda fan, mm -hmm. and I'm always going in with these super high expectations, and it'll be super great, and then I'm, I'm ultimately let down. I think what would have really helped is if a lot of those times when you had to revisit dungeons, if they had had an original dungeon in its place, you know, <laughs> perhaps perhaps something with ice, you know, maybe maybe you know, I hate to say it, Zelda in space, not this game, but anything other than just going back to the same things over and over. It feels like you're stepping back into the game, like you're not progressing forward at all. Yeah. Until you finish that segment, and and then you have that five minutes where the game is great again. Mm hmm And then all of a sudden you're like, okay. I so I do, I do like like when I was in the dungeons, except for the last one. When I was in this first six dungeons, I enjoyed it because I think the dungeons are well designed and they have interesting puzzles and there's good visual. I mean, it, it, the dungeons themselves are great, which is why I ultimately really like this game. It's the stuff outside the dungeons which are just so stale yeah usually each dungeon you do have to sort of you know traverse a few different like uh you know not necessarily trials but uh puzzles to get into the dungeon itself and i i think that's what you're saying those are the boring bits those are the bits where it's yes. just unsatisfying the pre-dungeon stuff that you're on rails is boring the yeah. dungeon stuff and, and they did i mean the puzzles are really interesting in this because usually you'd find an item like oh the bow and arrow and then every puzzle is solved with the bow and arrow but in this, you have to use like every one of your items, and you don't know what if you need the beetle or you need the bow or you need the hook shot. And it's I like that diversity because you have to actually think. Yeah, I mean, what uh, it seems like it, it, is that's that's pretty much new to the franchise, right? It's Instead having of just using the same yeah. the the one well, item the, that you find in the dungeon. The original Zelda was like that, but yeah. since Link no, to the yeah, Past, right. it's basically been you know you find this item and you use it to solve puzzles and kill that boss so this one was was a big step forward in that direction i thought yeah. but it's just the stuff before it is so tedious yeah i mean are there any other kind of innovations or good new additions to the franchise that you're like i want to keep i want to see this in the next one the inevitable next one oh see if you didn't add that last part i would have said it resoundingly i liked the upgrade stuff yeah because yeah. you can the stuff that you you're collecting actually has a purpose now you can upgrade your shield you can upgrade your items and I like the stamina bar because it makes you more agile. But I, I mean, I would scrap the, agi the ag agility stuff just to have a, a character who can jump on his own. Yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. But the upgrade stuff's good. Just make it more in-depth. That, that's worth keeping. Yeah, it's almost unnecessary. You don't have to touch it at all no. if you don't want to. But it gives you those options, you know, like, how do you want to prepare Link for this journey? And, th and that's nice because that's, that's new. It's mm -hmm. more flexible, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there, there are a couple, but it's basically the same game over again. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I would say it's a step back from Twilight Princess. I know some people might well, disagree with that, but I think it's a step back. And I ultimately enjoyed Wind Waker more as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not the biggest Wind Waker fan because of the Triforce Hunt. <laughs> the Triforce Hunt? It, yeah, the much maligned. The, the Triforce is back. I don't know. Like, uh, are we, it's like, it seems like each game, the reason why it's the problem is that you have just the exact same, exact same thing going, uh, going on each and every time in the games. Like, there's always Zelda. There's always the Triforce. There's always Ganon or Ganondorf or whatever his name is. Ganon is actually not in this one. He oh, really? Not. Yeah. He does not. But yeah, it, it's. I guess that's not my bigger problem because I don't mind it being in the same universe. It's just, it's just a remake of of Ocarina every time. And mm -hmm. Ocarina is only the like the third best. It, it, maybe it's the third best. I don't know. Maybe fourth best. I don't know. It's not even the best game in the series. Mm -hmm. So why are you remaking that one? Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's weird because I actually I enjoyed this game, but it would have been better if it was half as long. Yeah. Potentially, <laughs> like that's because what you yeah. take away the padding and, and yeah, with what we have, I think they could have removed it easily thirty percent of it. <laughs> wow, thirty percent. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the uh, like, what kind of padding? Uh, especially, you mentioned that there's some serious padding in the end. Uh, what kind of? What, what do you mean by that kind of stuff? Well, it's like you you confront a like a whale dragon deity, a whale dragon it's deity, le Leviathan, almost. and there's like there's four parts of the song. He's like, I got one part. Get the other three parts first. So you have to revisit the the grass and the volcano and the desert. And it's like, the desert one's actually not bad. Mm -hmm. You should go through a new area. But the grass one is like, it's the same grass when you know, except it's flooded. So you swim instead of walk. And you have to collect you have to collect fish notes. Yep. Which is, so you're swimming. Okay. Zelda's not fun when you're swimming. No. no so all you're doing is swimming. And it's like, you have this dousing ability. 
which lets you find out where the secret items are. But you can only use it when you're at the surface. And the stuff you need is way deep in the water. So you surface and you find out where it is, but it moved by the time you get there. So it's just like this really tedious swimming section in a Zelda game. And then the other part is a stealth section. Yeah. And it's, it's the worst stealth I've seen in, in 10 years. Worst stealth? In, what, what was the game 10 years ago? Well, I mean, like when stealth started with Splinter Cell and Metal Gear, and it was it was kind of dumb and arbitrary, where they'd forget where you were right away. Like this is like I would there's like a Moglin in front of me, and I would like walk forward, and it would like kind of see me, and then it would walk up slightly, and then I'd run around behind it, mm -hmm. and that was it, and I'd pass yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, what am I even doing this for? If you if you didn't take the time to program AI, yeah. why are you forcing me to take the time to play through it? It's just like a bad part. And we had to cut it from our original review because of embargo restrictions. Mm -hmm. That's real shady of Nintendo to make us not be allowed to talk about the worst parts of their game. No, I mean... So it's in a video review right now. If you go to the site, you can see the updated version where I say, Stealth is awful. Yeah. It's inexcusably bad. So that is padding. And that was like a three or four hour stretch between the Oof. fifth and or the sixth and seventh dungeon. Uh, that's, that's a bad way to end your game. Yeah, I don't know. And you're like, what, 50 hours in at that point? So it's not yeah. really... I, they kind of got you by the balls at that point. You want to see to the end, but you're like, do I really want to swim underwater for the next half yeah. hour? Do I, I don't want to. Yeah, because along with the, the tier collection thing, that's like the, the... You have to do that a total of five times. Was it five? I thought it was well, four. Well, if the four tiers plus the fish. <laughs> the, it's the same thing. It's just underwater. Mm -hmm. Oh, my you know. God. Yeah, this game is just so padded. Yeah. It, I don't get it. So... Peter, you you've been kind of looking at this from a, a game guide's pers perspective. How what do you think about the puzzles? Are they difficult or easy or? It's all about observation, really. Um, yeah. They give you the right tools uh, as long as long as you're looking around. Uh, there's generally like you know some sort of indicator of what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think the boss battles are fairly easy, but those are the most enjoyable parts <sighs> of the game. They're awesome by far. Uh, the the puzzles are okay. Yeah. You know. But they're none of them are entirely too difficult. There's, I'd say probably two sections, like the, uh, the Isle of Songs, when you have to rotate the pillars. Yeah, that one kind of it's a bit got me stuck. Well, yeah. it's a spatial reasoning one. I'm usually not good with those. Yeah, I mean you can kind of fudge your way through it. Yeah. Um, there is a right way to do it though, and it's not obvious. So, yeah. You know, I mean the the puzzles are checkgamespot.com for that one. You you can find it. <laughs> I <Nice>. swear. <laughs> they uh you know they challenge you to a degree, but yeah. uh. It, it's not that difficult yeah. in the end. So talking about puzzles, uh, yeah. the seventh dungeon, the last dungeon, it's a slide puzzle. Okay. Like, oh. Because it's got, there's like nine rooms in the whole dungeon and you go to a board and you slide the rooms around slide puzzle style. Yeah. Slide puzzles are like my least favorite thing. Are there like, anybody enjoy those types of puzzles? Van. Van. My my good coworker who sits next, he, he helps me with them because I'm just. His 7.0 coworker. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> he might be seven point five, but yeah, it's I I just hate those, and I can't believe like the last dungeon yeah. of the game was. This is our big one. This is what we got for you. Slide puzzle. So I wanted Bam! I wanted to talk a little bit about waggling. Oh yeah, because I the controls. I don't ever want to speak bad of my peers at other sites. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I read some reviews and they said you cannot win kill enemies by waggling. You will die if you waggle in this game, mm -hmm. and which is exactly what Reggie Fils May said at like E three. Yeah. Um. It seems like people are just regurgitating Nintendo PR because, as I show in my video review, and I and I did you know for forty hours of this game, um, you can waggle to beat almost every enemy. You will waggle. It's it's inevitable. You you almost get to the point where, it's the only way. Yeah, it's it's so weird reading like in, in black and white text like you can't do this, and I'm like, did you fight? Like you know, just just you know, being a jerk about it and going like, okay, the bats and the and the goblins, like these little enemies you fight. Did you? No, Z target, waggle, they're dead. Of that's course it. you do that. But like the bigger enemies, like that's the thing that's more interesting. Is because you're like, oh well the bigger ones, the bosses, the you still do it. Like um because you can you can use a shield parry. So okay. they attack you, you shield parry, and then you waggle and you attack them. And the shield parry usually makes up for any sort of you know specific uh direction that you would need to attack them in. Yeah. You know, you, you have to do that, but if you parry one of their attacks, they're open. I know. You just waggle your heart out. So it's it's a it's a really it's it's a really tough place for me as a reviewer because people have not played this game yet and they see so many other critics say, you cannot waggle to win. Mm -hmm. And then I go explicitly in my review like a whole paragraph of like, you can waggle to win. And they're like, well, you're lying. And it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because I, 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 I mean, I don't know. And it's, and it's also people were talking about um, Nintendo said you aren't supposed to waggle, so you were playing the game wrong. 
And that's a really troubling... That's the really <laughs> damning part for me, because if it's like, okay, fine, I'm not going to waggle, I'm going to try to play it straight, but there's still problems, right? Well, the controls don't always register properly. That's a, right. that's what... Yeah, and it's also just quicker. Problem. It's, it takes less time, and you get damaged less if you parry. But like people were saying I was playing the game wrong because Nintendo said to play it a certain way, and that's like a really scary idea. Because mm -hmm. I don't listen to PR, and I don't really read previews because I don't want to go into a game fresh. But if, if people are like so brainwashed by corporate that they play a game a certain way, like a different way, a way that might not be as enjoyable, then it's, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what to think about that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can waggle your way through this game if you want. That's, that's a completely there, valid way to well, do it. In, in defense, there are a couple enemies where you have to cut them in a specific direction, but you can generally just walk right by them. You don't, you don't <laughs> have to kill them. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, yeah, there are, there are some like that. Though it was also interesting reading reviews saying that it's like a puzzle when you fight these enemies. But there's like one, it's a flying thing and you parry it and then it shoots two balls at you and you have to slice the balls. Mm -hmm. But the balls, it's like clearly like a I blue line. I always hate when you have to slice the balls. Slice the balls. <laughs> it's no it's like a clear blue horizontal or vertical line. It's like, is that a, that's not a puzzle. Like anyone, anyone would know what to do. It's yeah. not really a puzzle. I don't know. It's just, it felt like reading these reviews that, that I've looked at now, they're, they're so effusive and glossing over the bad points. And, and it just, it makes my job a lot harder, I guess. Because yeah. when I'm trying to be honest and I see like these like, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't want to speak bad of other people. Like it's, it's. it's I just, mean, I feel like that's fair because your review score is sub substantially lower yes. than the vast majority of outlets out there. I, I mean, think it's the lowest from what I've seen. There's, there's yeah. a couple that have an eight, and I have a seven five. But yeah, most it's lower. I mean, are, is it just you know? People saying, "Oh, it's Zelda. We have to give it a high score." I mean, what is it? Isn't what have Zelda, you seen though. that's the most commonly? Or maybe not even common, but most ridiculous thing that other people are just giving Zelda a pass for. Well, it's just, I mean, people keep saying the structure is different in this game. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is just, like, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Nintendo said that, but I, I don't understand how a reviewer could have played Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and then this and said this is different. Because it's mm -hmm. structurally the same. It looks the same. So that's that's one of the things that's really frustrating is I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do as a reviewer. Because, I mean, I, I only speak honestly, but then when I get this the reaction from the readers, they... They assume I'm lying. I know, and, and I'm sitting, you know, across the room from Tom, and I hear his, you know, exclamations of frustration, and then he hears mine, you know, like an hour <laughs> later. Yeah. And we're just relating, you know, across this, this anger towards the game, and you know, it, it's we're not making it up. We went through these things. We've spent a lot of time with the game. Yeah. Those moments are there. You, I, I'm not sure how these other reviewers miss them, or what they found to make up for them, but. They're, yeah. they're there. Well, there, I think that there is a bump for, for all hyped games in this industry. And it's mm -hmm. and especially when we're talking about like a heavily hyped Nintendo game. I, know, I, think, I think just about everybody grew up with Nintendo. So, yeah. I mean, Zelda, Mario, they're in my heart. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like that. So, it's easier to overlook stuff. But my job is not to overlook anything. And I have to judge this against current games. And it's just not fair to, to say, oh, it's Zelda gets a pass. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. This game, it, this game it can go through the whole scale just like any other game I review. Yeah, so I have opened up live calls. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, I I don't have anybody calling in just yet. I, I didn't give much of a uh, a, a warning here. We kind of found out late that we'd be getting the studio. Uh, but uh, if anybody calls, I will I will cue them in, cue them up. Um, but as far as additional things to say about this game, speaking of padding, is this padding? It might be padding. I don't know. Um, I don't know. What, is there any any other burning things that you guys need to say about this game? It is worth saying the game is good. Yeah, I, it's good. I had a really uh, yeah, good I mean, time ultimately. Yeah. We haven't yeah. really talked about that much. How yeah. is this game really good? Okay, so there are these mechanics every once in a while where you have to say use a vehicle, or there's these moments where the situation is just beautiful and and you feel um, captivated by the world around you. You know. Yes. Uh, I'm also a sucker for for good art direction. Yeah, and this is this is a really good looking game. Mm -hmm. I really like. I mean, because it's for like a Wii game. It's just it's a good looking <laughs> game. Like yeah. that's the thing. Like it's because it's kind of combines. I didn't like the character design in Wind Waker, but I liked everything else. And it takes that and thrusts it into Twilight Princess. It's like the cell shaded Twilight Princess, mm -hmm. and it's really cool. It's, it's almost painterly at times. That's, yes. Yeah. You can almost tell they're using a filter on textures when they go into the distance. It seems like it's a yeah. like a pastel drawing. Almost. Yeah, it's nice, and it's the writing is is mostly the best I've seen in Zelda. Uh, the best character I've seen is Midna from Twilight Princess, but the other writing is the best. So there's actually side quests that I cared about. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one with a love letter, mm -hmm. where someone's like, "Deliver this love letter," and you have the and then 
Like, at the same time, first you find out that there's someone in a bathroom who needs toilet paper. Okay. And then, like, a minute later, this guy's like, I have a love letter. Uh, can you deliver it? And then the camera, like, subtly shifts. And so the guy, like, notices that you're looking at the bathroom. Link is looking at the bathroom. And he's like, what do you... No, don't give that to the guy in the bathroom. You have to deliver my love letter. Oh, wow. And, like, there's there's a couple of moments like that. He's right taking as, a poop. He is. Like, that's... It's so yeah. great. And you have the option. I don't know what happens if you solve it by giving the guy the toilet paper love letter. Yeah. You can solve it both ways. And, it, and like, the writing is good enough to make me care about it both ways. Hmm. So, I, I like, there's not a lot of side quests. Like, they're not organically handed out, which was frustrating to me. You have to go, like, to the main island and they tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. But I actually like the side quests. Okay, so uh, a lot of the uh, the character of the game, just like its personality, it's seems to be charm. charming. It's yeah. charm. Yep. Yes, the phrase of Disney -esque. choice. Disney esque. Disney esque. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, they they understand how to how to draw you in, mm -hmm. and yeah, like I said, the the dynamic between Link and Zelda is just outstanding. Well, it's, I don't know good. if yeah. I don't know if that's fair to say drawing you in because we'll you draw you into me? the world, I guess, from okay. from from an art, from a visual and from a character and from like that perspective, and the music is fantastic. Yeah. Like they do a great job of drawing you in that way. Mm -hmm. It's just the it's the frustrating moments that pull you out. I know it's just like why can't they they balance this? Because like my favorite is the original, and there you know there's no story, but so it'd be nice to have like some story with, with freedom and something. I don't know. Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, I mean there, there's a lot to like about this game, and I also like I like the bosses more than you, I guess. I only <laughs> died at one boss. No, I, I thought the boss is really good, and I honestly, when it comes to the controls, I do like the sword play. When it's good, mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah. Yeah, but it but it's <clears throat> it's so inconsistent. Yeah. So, you know, there there are wonderful moments to find within, within Skyward Sword. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're you know your seven point five. It's explain your score a little bit. It's it's for fans of the series. It's going to be a good game. But for people who aren't familiar with it, they're going to notice these problems and they're not going to understand yeah. or give Nintendo like okay, well it's all right. This is the way Zelda is. Yes. Yeah, seven point five for ups is something like it. It has major weaknesses, but uh, it's ultimately a good game, and it's for people who like the genre or series. So we're gonna go ahead and take a live call. Oh, this is gonna be awkward. Hello, you've reached the hotspot. Who are we talking to? Uh, Daniel Dawson. Hey, Danny, what's going on, man? I'm doing good. You have reached uh, Tom McShay and Peter uh, Brown, as well as Tom Magrino. What would you like to talk about? Uh, is this the uh, Zelda cast? It is. Yes. You have a question um, for us? I have a question for um, Skyward Sword. Yeah, go for it. Um, how is the uh, uh, music in the game? Yeah, you want to talk about the music? Yeah, I I love the music. It's 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 um similar to what they did with Galaxy Two, where they took a lot of older songs and like redid them. It's orchestrated, mm -hmm. and then there's a the new track as well. One of the ones that's really interesting is the third dungeon, which yeah. is unlike any Zelda track I've heard. It's really percussion y and interesting. I don't know, but I I love the music. I thought it was great. Yeah. All right, Danny. Hope that so, answered your question, man. All right. See you guys. Have a good one. The flying Thanks. music? So good. Mm. Do we have more calls? Hello. You have reached the hotspot. Who are we talking to? Uh, hey, this is Josiah from Pennsylvania. Hey, Josiah. What's going on, man? Uh, not too much. Big fan of the show. Um, I guess I'll just call in. I uh, played Uncharted 3 recently, played Dark Souls, played... Mm -hmm. Well, playing Batman. Going to be getting to that soon. And really liked all those games, but... This year was a lot about the sequels, and I know there's a lot of rumors about the next generation, but are you guys ready to see, like, Uncharted 4 or the next Batman in 2013, or would you rather see a next console generation and kind of wait for these games, like, for the new technical improvements for those games come out? Um, we could slant this in a Zelda way. You want to slant this in a Zelda way? <laughs> yeah, because this is a Zelda podcast. Okay. Um, I mean, it's I, I'm really curious about future franchises on new consoles. Yeah. Because I think we've kind of seen the limits with, with Batman and with Zelda and stuff on the current generation of what they can do from a mechanical perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, an, feel about an that. HD Zelda, I, I'm very curious to see what they what they would do with this franchise. Yeah. I mean, with the tablets, um, yeah. controller. So, yeah, I mean, I, I hope that all these companies take it like take a step back. I mean, I feel yeah. like Nintendo in particular has a lot of room to grow uh, with <laughs> yes. with their franchises in an HD era because that could be really interesting. I mean, that's I, I feel like that's what that's what the Zelda franchise and the Mario franchise and all of these other established um, uh, Nintendo franchises need. At this point is just a fresh look at their characters in, yeah. a, in a crisp new way. I think it'll help, but I don't know if it's the answer. Yeah. Um, especially for Zelda. You know, yeah. the game already does look pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah.
Yeah. Uh, it's not the the graphics don't hold it back in any way. If anything, mm-hmm. that's one of the stronger points. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, yeah, and then I, of course graphics are only one part of the new uh, generation. Yeah. Uh, new controllers. Yeah, like new the, controllers. New it's new yeah. online integration. I mean, yeah. there's just new possibilities. Can't wait to see well, online co-op in. We might see some Dark Zelda. Souls <laughs> combined with Zelda, maybe. I don't know. That could be interesting. <laughs> But I, I still expect That'd be the. F- kind of great. I am sorry for busting on the Zelda uh, podcast. Did not know it was supposed to be Zelda. No, <laughs> that's a like problem. I, with I totally Zelda didn't. Like, I guess I can kind of fit in with the question, but sorry about that. No, I, I totally didn't specify. So thanks for calling in. Yeah, I, that was, I saw the tweet. My fault. I've listened to the show a lot. I guess I did not notice it was a Zelda one. Sorry about that. It's all good. Good question anyway. Thanks for calling in, Josiah. Yeah, well, thank you very much. All right. So. That's, I think, all of the people we have calling thus far. Um, okay. Should we talk about the overworld? Can we talk about the overworld? You want to talk about yeah, the overworld? Yeah. It's another thing that's been a problem since, like, Ocarina. All right. So they gave you this, like, <laughs> they gave you a bird, which is cool, because flying is cool. And it's, like, this whole huge sky to, and there's all these islands. Mm-hmm. And, like, you, for the first hour, you set out, and you're flying. There's, like, nothing out there. Like, yeah. like the, there's, like, 15 or 20 islands that only have one treasure chest on them, and they're, like, only big enough to walk across for two seconds before you fall off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's and, a, there's like a couple small islands where you can do something else like with you know they give you a little side quests and there's interesting characters yeah there's like the tavern at one but there's yeah. like two or three islands with, that are populated and everything else is just a treasure chest you know there was that one island with the bamboo where you have to cut the bamboo yep. many times I really like the aesthetic of that and I liked, oh yeah I liked the the character that was in there I yeah. almost wanted to know more about him you know and he was some legendary you know swordsman, s- swordsman yeah you know. Of Skyloft and yeah, that was cool, but it's like I I did it twice and then I got like the the greatest award you can get right. and, I, and that was yeah. it. And I never had to go back there. Yeah, it was almost a waste. Yeah, so elements. it's I just want like a I want an overworld where like I can discover stuff, like happen upon a secret or like whoa, what is, what is that? Yeah, and and even when there are things to discover in the map, um, they're pointed out to you <laughs> yeah. when you when you activate the goddess cubes and it unleashes a treasure. Yeah, you go back up and it's. You know, granted, it's because of your sidekick. You know, she can tell you where they are, but it there's no mystery. It's all it's all right there. You can take 20 minutes, explore every island, and realize that well, there's not a whole lot to do. Yep, that's it's. I, I like overworlds a lot because yeah. that's why Link to the Past and the original are my favorites. Partly is because these overworlds are great, and then Zelda they've yeah. lost their way with the overworlds. If there's gonna be one part that isn't linear. I mean, that's their biggest opportunity to yep. do it. I mean, they did not take advantage of it, and this flying itself is kind of boring, also. Which a little was, bit, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, talking about HD and, like, next generation and stuff, I noticed a lot of times where uh, depth, like, a sense of depth to the screen would have made the flying, you know, much more interesting than it already is in terms of accuracy and, and the sense of traveling, you know, a distance and interacting with these things in a, a world that's entirely related to your spatial relations. Yeah. No, I totally understand because it does. you don't actually feel like you're moving in the air. It feels like the, yeah. it's coming c- closer towards you, but you don't actually feel... Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that section where you have to hit those targets before you learn learn the, uh, <laughs> yes. the last attack. It's deceptive. You know. Yeah. A bit. So that, and then that, it, that could be good. As soon as you do that, that like, there's a part where you learn a like a drill attack in the air, basically, mm-hmm. and like you're trained in it. And then like literally five minutes later, you have to do that in a boss fight. And I was like, really? Yeah. Like it couldn't. It's and it's identical in the boss fight. Like it's it's presented in the same way, and it's like the same targets, and it's like. And granted, the move is only an upgrade from what's essentially just a charge attack. Although yes. now, now you're spinning, which makes it, I don't know, what, 10 yeah. times stronger? <laughs> they, built, they made it seem a little more interesting, but it's just like you have to do it twice, and it's in like a rapid succession. So they don't they really don't understand pacing and giving like room to breathe. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take one more live call. Okay. Hello, you have reached the hotspot. Who are we talking to? Hi, this is Lark Anderson calling from downstairs. Hi, Lark Anderson. How are you doing? I let you know. I, what was that? How are you doing today, Lark Anderson? I'm doing great. I just wanted to let you and everyone else on the hotspot know that I have recovered from my <laughs> Oh, you are alive and, and well. as a result, I'm now a Batman villain. So look forward to a needlessly complex series of, of accidents occurring to you and everyone else for revenge. That makes sense. Uh, your secret power will be drool. It'll be an acidic yeah. drool that you can drip on yeah. anyone and make their technology break. Yes. And also hate on the Zoom marketplace. That that is fair, <laughs> very fair. So just wanted to say, you know, give you guys a heads up. All right, uh, thank you very much. And by the way, Lark is the guy who's been making all of these changes that have been going on with the hotspot happen. So if you want to give a thanks to anybody, it would be Lark Anderson. <laughs> there we thank go. You. Thank all you. right, Lark, thanks for calling, buddy. All right, bye. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about, or should we wrap it up here? I don't know. I'm probably done. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. You got anything else? Uh, 
you know, read Tom's review. Yeah. Uh, take the things he has to say seriously because he, you know, he's not making them up. They're there. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. And hopefully when you guys have some time to spend, you know, with the game, you'll realize it's not perfect, but it's great. It's still a good game. Still a game totally worth playing. Um, that does it for us. Tom McShay, thank yep. you very much. Peter Brown, nice job. First hotspot. Easily the best we've had as far as <laughs> first timers go. <laughs> I feel like it could have gone a little better. Uh, well, anyway. You know. So that does it for us. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hotspot out! <laughs> <laughs>